I get to build Greg Crow Hartman's computer, and it's gonna be a Threadripper. Thanks AMD for supplying the processor. 32 cores, 64 threads of absolute madness in this Arch Linux workstation. It's compact without being loud and sounding like a hairdryer. Also, we've got in here the Liquid HHHL. Now this is the one that Liquid sent me to use forever. I'm giving it, it's a four way NVMe setup. I've got it set up here in RAID and that's on Arch Linux. The final configuration here, it's got 128 gigabytes of, of memory. G-Skill, Trident Z memory, you know, G-Skill is sending a 256 gig kit for this build and some other videos, hopefully, fingers crossed. And uh, we've got the Noctua, you know, the Noctua, the big 140 millimeter Noctua tower cooler. We reviewed this in the past. This is a pretty good choice for Threadripper 3970X. It is at the absolute maximum end of what this cooler is able to deal with without making a lot of noise. That's the Be Quiet Dark Base 500DX. This is a relatively inexpensive case. This is not, you know, a high end, super top shelf case but it will give you super top shelf cooling with all the fans and the way we've got it configured here. It also has the Be Quiet 1000 watt power supply, which is extreme maximum overkill for this system. And it's Sapphire 5600 XT because obviously AMD GPU, it's open source, it's kernel developer, no proprietary software here. So if you want to reproduce this system, there's your parts list and the Arch Linux installation guide for exactly this setup. It's on the level one forums. I've got the Threadripper 3000 series build to end all 3000 series builds for Threadripper for Linux kernel developers. This is a build that I've been using personally since the 3970X launched and for development, any kind of development pretty much, it is extreme maximum overkill in a lot of ways. But when you need the horsepower of 32 cores, it doesn't let you down. This is a build for the Linux kernel commander in chief, basically Greg Pro Hartman. Yes, yes, the one from Uptime Funk. The, the one with the bad bug that made my system fold. Cole Torvalds and Crow Hartman. Now you know. So I reached out to AMD first and foremost because the only, the only caveat, the only catch was you're not allowed to spend money. You can talk companies into sending you stuff, but you're not allowed to spend money. And it's like, ah. Oh. But I've gotten so much joy out of the Linux kernel. It would be a joy for me to do this. So I reached out to AMD and they were like, do what now? Do what what? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, well, we'll see you at 3970X, it sounds good. So thanks AMD for participating in my little experiment. The 3970X is an insane processor. We've done a lot of videos on it. We've done a lot with it on our Linux channel. I've done builds, I've done like the gamer build and like the ridiculous, you know, over the top insane cases. And then I've done far more pedestrian builds. And this build I think is an everyman build. It's not too ostentatious. Really the main requirement was that it needs to be quiet. And I sort of took him literally. The Purebase 500DX, storage, Threadripper. You want Threadripper to go fast. That's why I like the motherboard that I picked, which comes with this. This is a add-in card. I mean, Threadripper, it sort of goes without saying that it's got tons of M.2 slots, right? This is the motherboard that I picked. This is also the one that AMD sent me for uh, the press kit, like the launch kit. So I'm giving away my only MSI motherboard but I think this is a good fit for his use case. One, it's not too ostentatious. This is a high-end board, make no mistake. MSI has not really compromised in much of any places, and it is not the least expensive TRX40 motherboard, but it's also not the most expensive motherboard. It does have 10 gig. It does come with the M.2 expander card, which will give you four M.2s, but mainly the big, the, the big thing here I'm looking for is the fan, because we're gonna use high-performance NVMe. Then we're gonna get a little warm. I was looking at this, but then it occurred to me, can reach out again. Liquid. This is a liquid HHHL. It's a half height, half length. Now this is a PLX bridge on a card. This is a lot more sophisticated than the Arrow M.2 expander. First and foremost, you see this big bank of capacitors? This big bank of capacitors means that the M.2s are gonna have a chance to write out whatever data they've got left sitting in their buffer. And this card has been specifically set up for the four M.2s that it has. It's a PLX bridge. It doesn't require anything special on the CPU side. I don't feel like that if you wanna replicate this build, you have to buy this unless you have very expensive, very nice taste because this is a very nice card. So this is gonna be about two terabytes of storage. Well, about 1.6 by the time it's formatted and we're talking about redundancy and all of the other stuff, which should be plenty of space and speed 
for any kind of kernel development that's necessary. The other thing that I like about this motherboard is the chipset fan, the chipset cooling, really isn't super loud. Some of the other fans can get a little whiny, and this particular board in the builds that I've done with it, I haven't really noticed. The VRM is also somewhat beefier than most, more or less beef. I mean, it's definitely more than you're gonna need for a 3970X running at stock speeds, but I like having the extra thermal headroom that that affords. We want 32 cores, but we want it to purr like a kitten and not sound like a reliant Robin that has been asked to pull a tractor trailer full of logs up a hill. For memory, I've opted for the G-Skill 256 gigabyte kit. 256 gigabytes on third gen Threadripper, you are pushing the envelope. On the level one forums and supporting users, we've had several users come to the forums with different 256 gig kits. And you know, officially, when you're populating all eight channels, the maximum supported memory speed from AMD is only 1866. But my personal experience has been that I can basically push 3200. Now, if you're running four sticks, 128 gigs, 3200 is no problem all day long, and that is a supported speed, but it can be a little sketchy getting all 256 gigs of memory to work because you're talking about two DIMMs per channel. And that's gonna vary, that support is gonna vary a little bit from motherboard to motherboard. So I reached out to G-Skill because G-Skill has built kits that have been qualified specifically for Threadripper. Right now he's using a Dell XPS 13 and I'm really hoping that once he gets the system up and running that I can hear some sort of maniacal laughter on the other end of the video conference. Oh for our power supply, be quiet coming in clutch again there, the straight power 11, 1000 watts. Yes, 1000 watts is totally overkill for the system, but hey, what are you going to do? And for graphics, we're going to use the Sapphire Radeon 5600 XT. This is an AMD sample again, so big thanks to AMD. But more importantly, he's gonna get some hands-on experience with that AMD GPU driver on the bleeding edge. <laughs> I can hear the nervous laughter from the uh, AMD headquarters now. No, I'm just kidding. Or am I? They're doing really well. They're under a lot of pressure. I can't say enough nice things about them. Good job, guys. It's so exciting. I really am genuinely excited about this because it's like the commander in chief. I'm, I'm, I'm the computer janitor for the commander in chief, at least in this very small way of the Linux kernel. I'm so excited. I can live vicariously. Or a little bit, I don't know. I'm kind of a nut job, that's fine. Forum.level1tax.com. But for now, let's do the build. Hey, soundproofing material. You could use a custom loop, that's also an option. You could use an AIO, but I've got a bunch of the Intermax AIOs, and I'm really not sure that they've still, they figured out their fluid. They're gonna have to come out with a new model that's got like fluid guarantee five years before I trust Intermax for my uh, TR4 cooling again. I think there's a lot of people who feel the same way. That said, I've got my Noctua mounted and I am gonna do a push-pull configuration because there's just no other option. Not really. It's also a good option if you're gonna fully populate the system with memory, which we are, 256 gigabytes, because it gives you the maximum clearance possible. Now when you're putting this motherboard, you may have to remove the fans that are pre-installed temporarily or at least loosen them so that you get a little bit more wiggle room because I'm having a little bit of difficulty getting the MSI motherboard that has the pre-installed IO shield to where it needs to go. Now with the Be Quiet case, you will have to remove this little bracket thing and it's gonna go away because this motherboard is an extended ATX motherboard. This is meant to give you a, a cover for hiding your cables. We, we can't have that, the motherboard's too big. So I've got my Noctua fan in there, but With tall memory, we have mere millimeters of clearance between the glass and the side panel. And this will probably be even a little bit less if you get the side panel that has noise dampening. So if you don't get the glass side panel and you get another noise dampening side panel. <laughs> now here's a note for Greg. There's lots of extra power cables. You can add as many GPUs and peripherals to this machine as you want, but instead of plugging these in, I'm just gonna stuff them in your three and a half inch bays, which right now are unused. So you can take these and store them somewhere else if you're gonna use three and a half inch hard drives in this at some point, but the only thing that's using the uh, SATA style power connector is the uh, RGB fan hub or RGB controller thingy. Moment of truth, let's see what happens when we turn it on. Now in terms of dust filtering, Be Quiet's got you covered there too. On the bottom, removable dust filter. 
pretty easy to remove and reinstall, but the front, it's got RGB pogo pins, so the RGB comes disconnected, and then you've got access to your front dust filter as well. You have to clean these because it breeds a lot. There's a lot of really cool stuff on the MSI motherboard that a Linux user would like. And we'll go through the BIOS options in a second, but the first thing is sensors. With a system like this, you know, 32 cores, we're really pushing the limits of what we can do with uh, tower cooling, it's gonna get a little warm. It's gonna peak around 85 degrees C at the die temperature. So being able to read that inside of Linux to get some idea of what your system is doing and your clock speeds and all that kind of stuff is really handy. So I've installed the uh, Freon extension, which is just an interface for LM sensors, but LM sensors detects a lot of our platform sensors. And also, the Creator TRX40 has auxiliary analog temperature sensor inputs. So there's a couple temperature sensors actually in the box, and you can locate those, you know, sort of throughout the case. We've got the Liquid HHHL that's installed in here. It gets quite toasty. I've added another very small Noctua fan to help with a little bit of airflow. Normally those are designed for servers, but I don't want this thing to sound like a server. And right now it's whisper quiet. So that might be a, a good candidate location for temperature just to keep an eye on it. And of course, because the individual NVMe on the HHHL are addressable to the system, we can read th those temperature sensors as well. Even with our Imprime torture test, peak fan RPM at about 1200 RPM, it's not super loud for my ear. I hope he likes it. It's really not too bad. Now our CPU utilization and our memory utilization are pegged in this particular configuration. I've got the microphone pointed right at the computer, and yeah, it's a little bit louder, but it's shockingly not super loud to be at the upper end of the thermal and power envelope for the AMD Threadripper 3970X. It really is an incredible amount of horsepower on a relatively modest power budget. They really ought to just rename themselves. Advanced micro devices, amazing micro devices. This is our MSI. Tour the UEFI, if your BIOS ever gets reset or you update your BIOS and it clears the settings, first thing you want to do is turn on AXMP, at least with the memory kit that's installed. Uh, it's going to run the memory at the memory speed that the memory was designed for instead of like a default speed. It makes quite a bit of difference in performance and shouldn't affect your stability. Under settings, there's not really a lot that you would have to mess around with in here. Uh, possibly SVM. Uh, secure virtualization is disabled by default. Things like IMMU options are going to be under AMD CBS. So you can go to AMD CBS and then Northbridge IO. And then IOMMU, you can turn that on. ARI support, you could turn on if you want. Uh, SMU common options, AER. Uh, there's a lot of fun PCI Express stuff. So there's another spot for IOMMU. SVM, I'm going to set to enabled because I figured you might want to run some virtual machines. The other stuff on default is basically okay, preferred cores and some other little performance helpers, all that's fine. Now the other part is your fans. Well, I'll show you Board Explorer first. Board Explorer is pretty cool when you add peripherals, so you can mouse over and see where things are plugged in. So like I can mouse over here, it's like, oh, ATI Technologies, PCIe, PCIe Bridge running at X16. That's your GPU. So Board Explorer is pretty cool. Hardware Monitor. Hardware Monitor is where you can configure your fans. So if the BIOS gets reset, all of this may get reset as well, but all you gotta do is just turn on smart fan mode if it's not on by default. But more importantly, you can set the fan curve and this is customizable and so when you save it, it'll save it in your UEFI. So if the system is too loud, you can sort of play with the fan curves here. You can also play with the power utilization, like you can set the, the configured thermal design power down a little bit and you know mess with the overclocking options but actually do some underclocking and run the system at a lower wattage, which will produce a lot less heat, which means the fans won't be as loud. But I think on this configuration, it'll probably address your needs pretty well. And most of my fans are not running at, you know, a thousand RPM, except for the one that's the main rear exhaust fan. So here's our fully put together system, at least for now, at least as far as I've been able to take it. I'm using it with an ultra wide Pixio monitor, PX347, just because. Now I'm gonna send the monitor. Although I might send a level one text KVM, that'd probably be really nice. This thing screams. It's about 20 seconds to compile the Linux kernel, as expected. But even under sustained workloads, like totally recompiling Yocto Linux, 
You can complete that in about an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. Yeah, the temperatures do get a little toasty. It's up to 76 degrees C, that Dark Rock Pro TR4 cooler, but the system really doesn't get a lot louder. It gets a little bit louder, but I feel like it's tolerably loud. And this is a build. This is a pretty accessible build. It's paint by numbers. If you want a machine that's this ridiculous, you could totally put this together for yourself. If you're an academic or a university researcher and you're looking around and it's like, gosh, you know, we would spend like $9,000 on a workstation like this. You can put it together, a retail price is for quite a bit less and still have all that ridiculous horsepower. Now, if you're in research, you're probably gonna wanna also add more GPU horsepower. AMD's got something coming for that. So I've been told, but that's a story for another time. And Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out. Let me know what you think of the build. I'll catch you in the level one forums. Well, thanks again, Mr. Greg Crow Hartman for participating in this madness. Honestly, I'm really excited about the, you know, sort of the Linux kernel commander in chief having direct access to this kind of AMD hardware because whew, boy, howdy, it's nice. And plus also bug fixes and tests, but mostly bug fixes. We want 32 cores but we want it to purr like a kitten, not sound like an, uh, crap. What will it sound like that will be terrible? Because after all, the 3970X should purr like a kitten, not sound like something that's very loud and annoying and shrill. The 3970X, crap, yeah. The 3970X system should purr like a kitten, not sound like a Ford Pinto. Your mother-in-law. <laughs> I don't know, no. <laughs> Greg Crow Hartman's AMA of sorts, I guess it is a true AMA, on Reddit slash r slash Linux. And he talks a little bit about his distro, his workflow, and other stuff that he does. So of course I've set up this machine with Arch Linux because Arch Linux, obviously. Goes without saying. But there's a lot of other interesting and useful nuggets there. And the thing that struck me is that, you know, he's got that same willing to help attitude that I do, which gets me into trouble sometimes because people were like, I'm having this weird problem. And he's like, tell me more. Can you post your system logs? And it's like, yeah, I mean, thanks, but can you delegate that? Because you're very important, but also that's awesome. Thank you. I don't know. The Reddit thread's awesome. You should check it out.